The colonization of the Congo region of Central Africa in the late 19th century was one of the most brutal examples of colonial exploitation and human rights abuses in modern history. At the center of this colonial atrocity was King Leopold II of Belgium, who turned his personal colony, the Congo Free State, into a massive labor camp fueled by unrestrained capitalist greed, racial discrimination, and violence. Under the rule of King Leopold II from 1885 to 1908, millions of Congolese people suffered unbearable cruelties and up to 10 million deaths as a result of exploitation, starvation, beatings, and other forms of violence at the hands of Leopold's colonial agents and corporate interests. The Congo Free State was not so much a traditional colony for Belgian settlement or strategic interests, but rather a massive extractive enterprise centered around the lucrative ivory and rubber trades fueled by slave labor. The Congo Basin in Central Africa is a vast geographic region spanning parts of the modern-day Democratic Republic of Congo, Republic of Congo, Central African Republic, Cameroon, Gabon, Angola, Zambia and several other countries. The region boasts an area of over 3.7 million square kilometer and was home to a rich diversity of ethnic groups and peoples prior to European colonization in the late 19th century. Some of the major ethnic groups of the Congo Basin included the Congo, Luba, Mongo, Zande, and Mangbeta peoples, with the region's population numbering in the millions over the vast territory. Many of these groups had developed centralized kingdoms, while others remained organized into smaller chiefdoms, clans, and village-based societies. In the centuries preceding colonization, large parts of the Congo Basin were influenced and traversed by Arab slave traders operating between Zanzibar, the Swahili coast, and inland regions they reached via river routes like the Congo River itself. The slave trading networks and ivory trading of these Arab caravans extracted countless slaves and resources from Central Africa for export to the Indian Ocean world, the Middle East, and across the Sahara into North Africa. Arab slave trading in the Congo gradually became more organized and entrenched after the 18th century, with major states like the Sultanate of Zanzibar and Zanzibari traders establishing fortified settlements along trade routes deep into the heart of the Congo Basin, especially in the eastern regions. These trading and slaving interests inevitably came into contact and conflict with indigenous African authorities and European colonizers in the late 19th century. King Leopold II's Congo Free State King Leopold II of Belgium had a long-standing interest in colonialism in Africa motivated by economic interests and a desire for national prestige and global power. After failed attempts by Belgium to colonize parts of the Philippines and other regions in the 1860s, Leopold turned his sights on Central Africa and began lobbying at geographic societies in Europe concerning the civilizing opportunities of the Congo Basin. In 1876, Leopold organized a private holding company disingenuously fronted as an international scientific and philanthropic organization to carry out his colonial plans for the Congo Basin. He hired the English explorer Henry Morton Stanley to map and prepare the region for his schemes under the auspices of the International Association for the Exploration and Civilization of the Congo. At the Berlin West Africa Conference in 1884-1885, European powers mapped out their spheres of influence in dividing up African territory. Taking advantage of the horse trading negotiations, Leopold was able to present himself as a neutral party and philanthropist merely interested in anti-slavery efforts in the Congo Basin. The other powers agreed to grant Leopold a vast swathe of territory twice the size of Texas around the Congo River Basin as his personal private king colony, the Congo Free State, on the condition that he guaranteed free trade in the territory. Thus in 1885, King Leopold found himself as the sovereign ruler of the world's only private colony beholden to no governmental oversight or authority beyond maintaining free trade. Immediately after securing his colony from the Berlin Conference, Leopold began private companies backed by his own fortune to quickly exploit the Congo's human and natural resources by any means necessary. The extreme violence, forced labor, and atrocities that followed in the subsequent years in Leopold's Congo Free State would make it one of history's most infamous humanitarian catastrophes. Forced Labor and Resource Extraction, 1885-1890 